Hi everyone, I'm Danilo Otero Lopez. I am a PhD student of civil engineering at the University of Maine. My advisor is Aaron Galant, and today I'm going to talk about my research topic, which is on lateral spreading and basal stability of column support embankments. So first, I'm going to talk about the motivation of this study, and first to say that these columns are now a popular ground improvement technique. And the reason is that these columns are very easy or very fast to, to, to be. And they how and how they are built is that they have the drill machine and they drill until the desired depth. And then when they found this desired depth, they as they extract the column, as they extract the machine, sorry, they with they grounded the co the concrete. And it's very easy. So to make that, it is very fast. And the problem, one of the concern in the industry now is that they want to know or there is a concern regarding of the fracture of these columns because this is unreinforced concrete. Uh, there is no steel. Former uh, piles have this steel and also have a like a slab and they can transfer the load very equitative to each column and is very like is very know how to to get the load of each column but now the, the system has be more effective, have evolved in this part so they want to know how will be the consequence of fracturing of the rigid inclusion so this is one of our first conclusions i'm going to show you later and also in this study, we found or we want we were interested on in determining the influence of this upper crust that we determine which are high with a thickness. And also the spacing of we vary the spacing in our simulations. I'm going to show you later the diameter. And everything will be focused or our indicator of basal stability will be focused on one kilometer that we are going to put and this is kilometer is going to be one space in front of the toe and here we are going to measure what will be the lateral deformation so this is the motivation so first we want to know what will be the consequence of fracturing and also what will be the importance of these parameters this is a failure case in Japan in which you can see that this row is has failed and you can see here the failure surface and we know we see that the columns were tilted at the end so So the next step is the methodology. And for this, we made a collective analysis of field case scenario in which we can we, we determine these typical dimensions, like the field high, sloping, water, the off the water table. And with that, we also find typical water contents of the soil, soft soil. And with this one, we, we could like find a parametric study in which we can vary the E50 hardening soil model, the stiffness modulus for hardening soil module, the odometric, and the, the UR, the unload reloading. So this was our first attempt. So I make a parametric analysis based on typical uh, column geometry of subsoil conditions. So the another part or the other part in the 3D, so we may have three final element parametric analysis. And another part to consider that we consider is this interface. So uh, the fracture was modeled using interface. And after this has yield, or one, we found that one point has yielded and had reached 
the yielding stress of the concrete. So we define a interface. And this interface is a function of a more clone in which mu represents like the friction angle and we found friction angle for concrete to concrete materials. And also this allows non when it allows when this this shear resistance is achieved or is greater, so it can slip. And also it can also when there is tension, it can uh, separate. So this how this is how we made this one. So we made a parametric study based the parameter we're choosing based on the on the review of the field cases and we use this this um this analysis interface method to analyze the the, the, the fracture. I have to be clear that this doesn't uh, to, doesn't take into account the 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 fracture energy due to micro cracking and due to the the growing of the crack but this is simple so finally i'm going to talk about our results so first we have like this part of the fracturing that i told you that it was very important and we analyze the fracturing based on three time based on three models so first, infinite strength in which we say the columns have infinite bending stiffness strength, sorry. The progressive crack in which we put the, the interface, we assign or we activate the interface once it reaches the tensile strength of the concrete. And finally, we put interface every one meter from the beginning. So as you can see the difference, I'm showing here the lateral deformation over the depth, like the inclinometer that I showed you later, actually before. So you can see there are no appreciable difference. So this is for high field of three meters, high field of four meters, and high field of five meters. And this is drain, and this is undrain. So it tells us that the in the the fraction of the column doesn't have an appreciable influence of the lateral response and one of the the and one of the conclusion that we make here is that the reason is that the, the soil is putting a lot of passive resistance to restrain the movement so another important parameter or another important thing that we make here is a parametric study, and when we can vary or we vary the area of replacement, which is different area of the concrete over the area of the unit cells, and also we will see for Andre and Andre case, and I'm showing here the lateral deformation maximum over the height of the field versus the the thickness of the crust, the upper crust over normalized also with the height field to the field height and important here is the field cases that we found so everything is together here and each other like the area replacement as it's higher the lateral deformation is lower and drain is critical condition than drain and also the h1 the upper cross is limits or also decrease the lateral deformation and it gets bigger so this is very important and we also made this for other two soils that i'm not showing here so another important thing is the the efficacy of the geosynthetic and this column support embankment usually they have a geosynthetic that is used to transfer the load from the field to the columns like more uniformly and also to prevent lateral spreading but here is focus like a efficacy like means like how much is helping us to restrain that and what will be the difference if we don't use that just synthetic what will be the lateral deformation if we don't use that and we and if we do if we do that so i'm showing here the stiffness of the geosynthetic versus the efficacy 
And as you can see, for almost all cases, every three, three fall in this part, which seems like is not too much, is 0.33% of the efficacy. So this is our results. And I want to analyze the DFI for the funding and also the TIDC and also Aaron Galan for, for helping with this and also be very patient and very appropriate.